Hello everyone, it's Shannon here for Waffle Flower Crafts. In this video we are once again going to play with the stitchable dies, but this time we're going to do it a little differently. We're not actually going to stitch. I'm going to share with you a couple card designs where we do zero stitching, but still have a lot of fun with these awesome stitchable dies. So the first idea I have to share with you is creating your own die cut panel with a stitchable die and then pairing it with either color cardstock or in this case, I'm gonna pair this with patterned paper. And that's gonna have a really colorful kind of background but still be very clean and simple and modern. I have a die here from the stitchable squares die set. This is basically a strip of the little stitchable dots. I just centered it here on an A2 panel of 110 pound white cardstock and then ran it through my die cutting machine. I'm now going to center the die again. On the upper half, I'm going to use the grid lines here on my work surface to make sure that die is perfectly centered between the first die cut strip and the edge of my cardstock. I did, I do, I should say, clean this die every time before I use it again. I just kind of tap the die on the edge of my trash to kind of release most of the little negative pieces that are stuck inside the die. So now I'm going to center it here in this opening between the first and second strip that I cut and then just run it through my die cutting machine and then I'll finish the top the top half by die cutting the strip one more time and you can see I have half of this panel now with these the this, this strip of these little openings. Now I'm going to repeat this process for the bottom half so again center it in that remaining half and then die cut it and then die cut it two more times. And here you can see I have a panel of striped little polka dotted sections and now I'm going to use the A2 piercing die, pier, piercing panel die to kind of help me clean out and get all those little negative pieces out. Just kind of press my finger over where those little pieces are, rub it a little bit on that panel die and that will kind of pop out all those little negative pieces. So I'll repeat this until I have that panel completely cleaned out so all the little negative pieces are removed. And now I'm ready to pair it with my background. I also created a second panel. I used this stitchable hearts die to create the second panel. That one was really easy to create. The three hearts are all on one die. I just centered them on that cardstock and ran it through my die cutting machine. Here is JJ's rainbow paper pad. I love this paper pad. I am going to use this behind these die cut panels. This is going to add all the color. You of course could use colored cardstock. You could even create your own strips with colored cardstock, but this JJ rainbows paper pad makes kind of putting these cards together so easy. So I just added some liquid glue to the back side of that die cut panel and I'm just going to center it on to my rainbow pattern paper and already you can see the color poking through. It has a really clean and modern look. Now this one I intentionally did not make this a A2 panel. I wanted some of the stripes to poke out. I thought that was kind of a fun and different look. I just added some liquid glue to the back side of my white panel and then adhered it onto that A2 panel of rainbow paper. So here are my two finished card fronts. I'm going to put those aside and move on to another technique. So I already die cut this A2 panel of lightweight cardstock. This is only 65 weight with that heart die three times to kind of create like a grid of hearts. Now I'm going to center it here on an A2 panel of white cardstock and I'm going to use that die cut panel as a stencil. So that's kind of another way to use these stitchable dies is kind of create your own stencils with them. So I'm going to tape it down onto the panel and then tape off around the heart that I want to actually ink blend on top of. I'm just doing that so I can protect the other hearts. I don't want them to be contaminated with the color I'm ink blending. I want each heart to be different. I'm going to start with kind of a pink color and ink blend that first heart. Then I will remove the tape, kind of mask off the other remaining, the other hearts around the heart I'm going to ink blend, and then ink blend that next heart. And basically I just repeated this process until I had the whole panel of hearts, each heart in a different color of the rainbow. And I do want to point out that I am using a blending brush. I found that worked a bit better than using those foam blending tools. So now that my panel is complete, I'm going to remove my tape and then remove my stencil. And you can see here this panel has these beautiful beautiful dotted spotted um, rainbow of hearts. So I went ahead and trimmed this panel down just about an eighth of an inch on all four sides so it has a little border when I adhere it down onto 
an A2 top folding white card base. I'm just going to use some liquid glue here and then just center and stick that down. So again, a pretty simple card. I do have a sentiment here and I'm going to add that to this card. But before I do that, I want to add a little bit of dimension to it. This sentiment was really quick and easy to create. I used the Peony Dream stamp set, just stamped it, and then used the coordinating die to die cut the sentiment out. And now I'm going to add some dimension by stacking these strips of white cardstock, one on top of the other using liquid glue, then finish by adhering my sent sentiment right on top. Then I'll add liquid glue to the back side and adhere it to the front of my card. And that will actually complete the card here. Hold it to the camera so you can see those stacked white strips of cardstock. will add just a little bit of lift, a little bit less than foam tape. Sometimes I feel like foam tape is a little too much uh, dimension. Here is that leftover stencil. Now I thought that this might be cool to kind of use on a card. I just kind of turned it over and you can still see the color, which is kind of cool, even though it was all ink blended on the front. But I do want to lift this up, so I'm going to grab some foam dots here and just add them to the back side of my panel. Then I remove the backing, and then I'm going to center this panel here on to a square card base. This is actually four and three fourths by four and three fourths. And then I also created another sentiment strip here. This is also the exact same sentiment I used on the previous card. And I just added some liquid glue to it and adhered it onto the card front. And I think this turned out really cool, and it's a great way to kind of waste not to use that stencil and I think it has a nice dimensional look as well. So now I'm going to move on to the other two cards that I created at the beginning. Just finish them up by adhering some sentiment strips onto them as well. And here is our whole pack of stitchable cards with no stitching. So a bunch of fun ideas here and I only actually used two dies to create all these cards. I hope you guys enjoyed today's cards and video. If you'd like any more information on the products I used, please head over to Waffle Flower and you can follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook for more creative ideas. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.